welcome to my channel. I'm Allison. Today we're going to talk about life after Bufo. So it's been officially one year since I had both of my Bufo ceremonies, which is 5-MeO DMT. And I wanted to give you guys an update to fill you in to let you know what's going on since then. Let me just start off by saying there was nothing that could prepare me for what I experienced in my ceremonies and especially after my ceremonies and my integration. And I did so much research beforehand about Bufo. I read every research paper um, and document I could find. I watched a bunch of videos and I really did my due diligence on like the pros and cons in order to make a, an informed decision before I decided to move forward. So just a brief overview of my ceremonies and integration, and I'll be sure to link uh, the full videos of each below and that those are a little bit more detailed. So for my ceremonies, my intentions for both were to release any trauma, fear, and limited beliefs. These ceremonies were singularly, singularly the most profound experience of my life. Um, it was complete euphoria and bliss and I felt connected to God, um, that divine source energy. I felt uh, limitless, like I was an infinite spark in this white void of nothingness and I felt this overwhelming amount of love that felt too much to bear. Um, it was such a powerful feeling <laughs> that I freaked out after <laughs> the first few seconds because I thought that I burst and shattered every window on the 30th floors of the building I was in. <laughs> it was that earth shattering and explosive, yet somehow such a familiar feeling like where we come from and where we end up. Now, the second ceremony was the same euphoric experiences again, you know, this big bang and white and just, you know, it was just, it took my breath away and there's just really not any words that can justify that, that feeling and that, you know, um, understanding of like what it really is. Um, and then towards the end, I was just hysterically crying from like the deepest, darkest depths of myself. And that's when I had, um, suppressed trauma that bubbled up to the surface and I realized that there was some childhood sexual abuse and you know in that moment everything kind of just made sense um because I've been for for the five years before I did Bufo um I've been digging for answers on this you know healing journey and it finally came full circle and made so much sense and now that I, I got the answers, I could finally start to heal and integrate and move forward with that. And, um, and, and yeah, so my, that's just the gist of it. I'll put the full video below of a more detailed version of what happened. Uh, now let me tell you guys, uh, my integration was uh, the most horrific, and terrifying and out of the world uh shit i've ever experienced in my life ever and i'm talking a real life exorcism literally a real life exorcism the shit that you see in movies with demonic entities and dark energies inside of people yeah that 
So, um, this happened, um, for, like for a total of three times over the course of a week after I did Bufo with the third time being for nine hours straight, which started from 11 PM till eight in the morning. And I thought that there was like a horror movie theme song on cause it really like sounded like, you know, when the things are circling above. And I called my fiance cause I was like, he doesn't like horror movies. And that's when I realized, oh no, this shit's ha actually happening in my room. <laughs> and um, the way that my body was con contorting and shaking, it was not humanly possible. Um, the sounds that were coming out of me were not mine. It was like a hissing sound, like, and then another one was like, a, and then another one was an evil man's voice, like screaming. And since the first night that that happened, um, my fiance just knew innately what to do. Like he's, he just started worshiping over me and like asking God for deliverance and like saying hallelujah and like, you know, all of these, all of these different things. And that third night, it was, it was so aggressive and it was terrifying and like I didn't know if I was gonna make it out of it to be honest with you um and then it started thundering and lightning but the thunder it was just almost like the ground was shaking like it was a rumble and the lightning was coming into our bedrooms on the third floor and it like came into the window three times and he was just over me for like three hours straight worshiping and um it <clears throat> it felt like god filled the room and um it was the most beautiful feeling and i could feel this the rest of it being pulled out of me in the most sweetest gentlest way and you know it was darkness coming out and I know that a few people have asked me previously when I did the video about the integration, um, you know, it, did this happen because of Bufo? Uh, no, it felt like this has been inside of me for a very long time. And the amount of love and, and light and divine connectedness to God um, pissed that shit off and they were upset and they wanted out because they couldn't stay there anymore. And, um, it was hard to surrender to that experience and just to let it move through me. Um, because when all of my, all of those sounds were coming out of me, like I would just be crying through like, why God, please help me. And, um, and so the next night, um, while I was sleeping, my arms went out straight to the ceiling and, um, and my, my head went up to the sky and I started speaking this other language that felt so ancient and I had no idea what it was, what I was saying, but it felt like I was talking directly to God and, um, I was speaking in tongues and <laughs> I, I told my fiance cause I looked over and he wasn't there cause he has insomnia. And so, um, the next morning I, when I went downstairs, I told him what happened and he jumped up out of his desk and he was like, you got the Holy spirit. Like he loves you. Like they can't come back. And I honestly just hysterically was crying because I felt so loved and so protected and that moment like it was done and couldn't come back and um in retrospect i think that it was nothing short of divine timing that i had daniel my fiance to help me through this and that he knew just innately what to do growing up in the church and seeing things like this done before him and I don't think that um, it could have happened until I felt safe enough with the person to do it with. 
And um, like even a few months after that, we FaceTimed my parents together because I wanted to share what I uncovered from my childhood and then also my integration experience. And my mom was just like, thank God for Daniel because I wouldn't have known what to do and would have called 911, which is clearly <laughs> like not what you needed. And I'm just so grateful you had him. My sister said the same thing. Um, but, you know, I had been doing really deep inner work for five years before I did um, this, this medicine. And I feel that all of that work acted as building blocks in laying the foundation for my success with this medicine. And in addition, I don't think I could have learned about that trauma and had been able to deal with it in a healthy way until then. Um, <laughs> the old me would have like flipped tables and burned shit down. So, <laughs> um, you know, I think that everything happens when it's supposed to and when you have the tools enough to deal with it in the correct way. Life after Bufo. So, <laughs> after that freaking whirlwind, um like you just can't go back to regular life after that it's just ripping the band-aid off of everything that you know to be true um and especially like that stuff when i would never in a million years think that exorcism was real or you know that you could speak in tongues or like any of those things and um so now like after all that my body is extremely sensitive to um, like energies and frequencies. And so like I shake when I hear like Hertz frequencies or do my meditations. The veil was uh, super thin when all of, all of this integration stuff was going on. And I could actually feel uh, my cousin who passed away when we were 21, like holding my hand and like rubbing my back to console me. And um, and I still feel certain energies and I'm just trying to navigate and understand like what to do with it. Um, so it's, it's still a work in progress. My body is also very reactive. If I say something, it will confirm by like head to toe goosebumps or like shaking in my stomach and I started working with um, a shaman for my integration and I was reading about shamanism um, after one of my, my sessions on my phone and my face was like pulled to my phone where my nose was like touching my phone and my breathing was super heavy like and my body was shaking and then I had like tears running down my eyes like while wow, I'm looking at this and I'm like okay like I see you like there there's something here and um so it's, you know maybe it's something that I'm gonna look into as part of my my coaching practice but every time I read about it like literally just thinking about it um, my stomach is shaking um which is just really interesting and I did a lot of, uh, I used a lot of shamanic tools in my healing um, with my sh uh, shamanic uh, coach and um, like s just some things again were like so wild and out of this world, like the healing powers of quartz crystal and what you can do with it. And like, we actually went through like this whole ritual thing. And when I was still going through the integration, like holding it and doing different um, things and I could feel all of this energy coming out of my body like and into the hand that I was holding it like I was when you shake an edge sketch and it just all goes to one side it was wild and um, this has just opened my eyes to so many different things um, <clears throat> also like after I get out of the shower I feel like there's a lot of healing energy with water and um, so my hand, uh, moves like over my body, like, I don't know, just be like super fast, like hummingbird flaps its wings. And it's just 
does its thing. Um, again, I'm not really sure <laughs> what, I think it, I think my body knows what it's doing, but my mind just isn't quite there yet. Um, so takeaways, it's always interesting to like sit with medicine and go through the preparation and then the integration and then like look back at it. Like, okay, here's some big takeaways. Number one, preparation. Um, no one has a crystal ball and knows what exactly you're going to get from the medicine. Like, and if anyone tells you they do, they're straight up lying. So everyone's different and has their own life experiences or trauma. And so not one experience or ceremony will be identical. And I think it's important to have a spiritual practice in place um, where you're already doing some level of the work towards healing and, um, and making sure that you're grounded because um, this, I had to do a lot of grounding after the fact course like my experience I don't want to freak you guys out with the integration was considered to be a rare experience by both my facilitator and my shaman so um and like I've had probably three or four girlfriends also that have gone through it and like no one that I've known or seen anything has had anything that happened like that um I think that also setting your intentions um, are powerful and can shape your reality. So, and sometimes your intentions may not match with what the medicine wants to show you. Um, I had some pretty lofty <laughs> intentions and I got exactly what I asked for. So, uh, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> um, number two is um, support. Having a support system in place is key. Um, most people will never understand what you experience unless what they unless they sat with that medicine themselves and it's important to have people around you who will love and support you um on your journey and can hold space for you three is uh integration so integration is a really vital uh part of you know doing any plant or an animal medicine and and then taking the insights received during that ceremony to fully integrate and move forward to heal. Um, for me, I worked with, with that shaman and we did like quantum hypnosis. So I was able to go back to that six year old little girl and heal that timeline. And when you experience a trauma as a child, you dissociate but, your, but that trauma remains in your body and that part of your soul is almost fragmented. So there's all sorts of support based on your needs. And I also do integration coaching with people as well. So um, I'll link my website below in case you guys are interested. Uh, another thing is like, you have to face the darkness and the shadows and feel the feelings in order to move forward and heal. And <clears throat> I think that's an essential part of healing that's not often you know, talked about, most people are like, love and light, but like, no, you have to face like the gnarly, the gnarly shit that you don't want to, um, that's buried deep inside of you. Um, and, and that part of it shouldn't be avoided. Um, it's really hard and scary, but absolutely necessary. Um, and so you got to do that. Number five, uh, tr a trusted shaman or a facilitator um <clears throat> is important when you're considering doing this medicine this is a completely life-changing experience uh and and so you want to make sure that you have someone with pure intentions who's super knowledgeable in this field and can guide you through that process so um i'm partnering with my shaman uh, she's also a medicine woman we're doing an upcoming retreat together uh <clears throat> so i'm really excited about because uh, the ceremony I did was with my girlfriend and, um, not only was my experience the most profound and beautiful thing I've ever, I've ever, you know, experienced, but watching her and her ceremonies and that it was like, I don't think that there's anything else better than this in the world. Like people actually healing themselves. And, and like, <clears throat> I was like, if this is something that I can help facilitate or be part of like 
this will never feel like I'm even doing working out. I'll just feel so much like gratitude and like love for what I'm doing. So if you're interested, I'll, I'll just link that below. And then lastly, um, knowing what I do now, after all that I went through, would I go back and do it again? Absolutely. It was all for the greater good and has allowed me to heal past timelines and shed old layers of myself that no longer serve me and just continue to step into this higher version of myself. And I was doing a lot of deep work with all like alternative medicines and using a holistic approach and hypnosis and meditation and ketamine. And I was doing all of the things, but I don't know if I would have ever uncovered that suppressed trauma if it wasn't for Bufo. And I definitely had no idea about those entities um, inside of me. And so I think that's why a lot of people, when they're doing a lot of stuff matter to matter, they may not be getting anywhere. Like that whole experience has made me look at mental health completely different and addiction, especially, you know, when people say like they're battling demons, you have no idea what can, ha what could have a hold of you that you can't even see, you know, it's, it's, it's spiritual warfare basically. So, um, I hope you guys have found this to be helpful and informative if you're doing some research and interested in the medicine. Um, again, I'll link um, my website below with the retreat. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. Um, <clears throat> my website is alisonwolf.com or you can email me at hello at alisonwolf.com. And until next time, you guys, bye.